<coughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Torquing TV. Today we'll go over a few harder to find items that we carry and then we'll head outside and show you something that could make your life a whole lot easier. Here's a few things that are harder to find that we still carry. We've got Selectro hubs for your older external uh, lockout hubs. Uh, also many of the Spicer hub components. We've uh, remade uh, the three colors of the dials in aluminum. We have recently started making the uh, rubber V-seal that goes on those dials. You could use an O-ring. It's usually either too tight or too loose and it just gives you problems. But we've got the uh, original style sealing ring. Got the pins for them. We've got the shim and paper gaskets for it. Sometime soon we're going to make these out of stainless steel. These are the factories are just uh, pot metal. And after a while the bolts mash down the, the outside and they start to crack and they don't line up right and they just look awful. So we'll make those out of stainless steel here soon. On the shelf as well we have uh, good used internal spicer hubs. We've got all three colors just for the dials in these and these are the original plastic dials. We've got other front end stuff including uh, 8 and 12 bolt knuckle seals. We've got kingpin shims large and small and we do have the uh, trapezoid shims that go under the steering arm got the bushings and the bearings and all that the bigger bushings aren't available anymore so we had some made up for us and we have some dana 70 front stuff that stuff's getting real hard to find we also can offer uh, if your tractor joints went out in yours if they exploded like they tend to do especially under a little bit of horsepower we can make uh, chrome molly axle shafts for you and uh, just for just about any three-quarter or one ton truck um, clear back to since they started putting axle shafts in worst case scenario we might need to have you piece yours together your broken one together best you can so we can get some measurements but then we can get them made out of uh, chrome molly steel. There's a lot of axle shafts that are no longer available from Dana. Just give us a call. We'll see if we can set you up. We've got a whole stack of axle shafts right now uh, ready to go. If we don't have something in stock or on our website, give us a week or two and we can get, a, get something made up for you. Got some 205 stuff. We have uh, started to remake the shims as well as OEM specification gaskets. You don't have to worry about putting Chinese gaskets in anymore or using silicone for the 205. The gasket is your bearing preload is what sets it. So use OEM if possible. This is as close as it's going to get and it's right on the money. We've got uh, the pivot bolts for the shift lever for those drilled for a Zerk fitting. They just quit making these not too long ago so we went ahead and took one we had, drew it up and started making those. We've got uh, stainless steel shift linkage hardware. Also a manual for those 205s. Full color photos and everything. And uh, a dummy idler shaft. So you can put your shims on it and your gear and this will fit inside the case. You line up your idler shaft on the outside of the case. You push it through. Get rid of that. Put your nut on. You're ready to go. Got some Dodge uh, 241 DHD stuff. Got a few planetaries left and some case halves that we found. That stuff's getting real hard to find. We've got some of it. Also have wheel hubs for up to 1991 Chevys with the Kingpin Dana 60s and the Dodge up to 1993 with the Kingpin Dana 60s and internal hubs. And 1980 to 1997 for Dana 50 IFS 
and Dana 60 uh, front axles. We've got the wheel hubs and spindles. They were a little bit underbuilt, so they tended to wear out kind of fast. We've got good used ones. Soon to come, good new hubs. Uh, don't know when that's going to be, but for now we're just going to stick with our used ones and we're getting them drawn up so that hopefully in the near future we can get actual new ones made. Another thing for the Dodge or the uh, Ford 50s and 60s with auto hubs, that little spindle nut retainer. We've got a whole box of these. For more information on the products we carry, check out our website or you can give us a call or send us an email. Right now we're going to head outside and see what kind of goodies we have out there. If you've ever had to lift anything heavy off the ground and put it in the back of a truck or use ramps to drive it up on, this product is for you. This is a hydraulic loading system made by Ameridec. It's a product we just started carrying this year. They offer it in short and long bed models. There's also many different bed configurations that go along with it. This particular one is a Super Deck 3 with the optional extension for it. Let's check it out and see how it works. There's a two position switch or a two button switch. You just uh, push down and it unloads and push up and it loads it back up. So we'll get it up a little bit here and see what the underneath looks like. This is what the underside looks like. Here's the two button switch. You just go up and down. There's uh, plenty of room under here. If you got a lighter half ton truck with one of these on, like what this truck is, you might want to put airbags on it. I've got airbags. I just haven't put them on yet. And there's plenty of room to mount a, an air tank and an onboard air compressor right there. The bed sits on top of these. So you've got close to a foot of space where you can mount something on that side. Um, you can also put whatever else you need under this side, uh, tools or other equipment you want to keep in the truck at all times. Uh, these beds, you can change them out with many different ones. They just unpins right there. We'll get to that in a second here. It's also got adjustable legs on it. You can go up and down depending on the ground you're on or just how you like to load and unload stuff. Uh, we'll get it put on the ground here and uh, show how it connects and disconnects. Okay, once you get it on the ground, you walk up here, and there's two pins you pull out. There's one on this side, and I already pulled the one on that side. Go back to your button. Now you're completely disconnected. You can pull out and uh, hook up to another bed, or you can stow this arm back in the truck and run like that. We'll get something put on the bed here and show it loading. Okay, I just got something put on there that would have been a nightmare to do with ramps or without a loading dock. Um, you just want to make sure that whatever straps you're using are adequate. You don't want to be using any cheap straps because you'll lose your load due to the steep angle that the bed gets when it's loading. So we'll see how it works. <laughs> stuff just became that easy if you have any questions on anything we covered in this video 
go ahead and give us a call or send us an email. Check out our website. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time right here on Torque King TV.